In this section, we're going to take a look at uh, stereochemistry and specifically enantiomers in more of an experimental setting. For example, the molecule I have here is called carvone, and it is a chiral molecule. And since it's chiral, it has two enantiomers and I'm drawing each of the enantiomers shown here. Now, the reality is, if you were to purchase carbone from a chemical company, well, this structure here is kind of meaningless because it doesn't tell us the stereochemistry. So we have the option of either purchasing either single enantiomer as a pure compound, in which case this first one if you look it up, it's called plus carbone. So you can go to a chemical supplier and get pure plus carbone in a bottle. Alternatively, if you want the other enantiomer, it's called minus carbone. So we can purchase this plus or minus in pure form. Alternatively, however, you can purchase a one-to-one -one mixture of the two enantiomers. If you do so, it won't be called plus carbone, it won't be called minus carbone. That will be listed as plus minus carbone to tell you it's the mixture. And what this actually refers to is something called a racemic mixture. So if you're talking about the racemic mixture or the racemate, you're talking about a one-to-one -one mixture of the enantiomers. Now with this, where exactly do you know, these plus and minus values come from? Well, just to give you a little bit of an idea um, in terms of some of the properties, these two enantiomers you can certainly get physical properties. You can take the melting point, and they're both 25 degrees Celsius. You can get the boiling point, and they both boil at 231 degrees Celsius. So the properties of the two enantiomers are nearly identical or they are identical so far. But there's one physical property that is different, and that has to do with the chirality of these molecules. This property is the optical rotation. We often abbreviate it as this alpha D20. The D is just the type of uh, lamp that's used. The 20 is the temperature. And there's an instrument called a polarimeter that you can put um, a solution of a chiral molecule in, and it measures how the light gets rotated. And one enantiomer will rotate light clockwise the other will rotate the plane polarized light counterclockwise. 
And for this particular molecule, light gets rotated 61 degrees. In the plus enantiomer, it gets rotated positive 61 degrees. In the minus enantiomer, it gets rotated to the same magnitude, just in the opposite direction, negative 61 degrees. So what we can say here is that these pure single enantiomers of chiral molecules, they're optically active. And what this special optically active term refers to is that they rotate plain polarized light. So now, if you think about the plus-minus carbone, the racemic mixture, you have a one-to-one -one mixture of the two enantiomers. So if you pass this plain polarized light through that solution, half of the molecules will rotate the light to the right. The other half of the molecules rotate it to the same magnitude to the left, and it cancels out. So in a racemic mixture, the optical rotations cancel. For that reason, the optical rotation is zero and racemic mixtures are optically inactive. So this optical activity we're talking about is measured by an instrument called a polarimeter. And the very crude basics of how a polarimeter works is, you know, you take light and, you know, light is scattered in all different directions. So here's our light source. And that light is passed through a polarizer. And this polarizer works on the same principles as your polarized sunglasses. So what that does is it only allows light um, of a certain polarization to pass through. So what you end up with are these, you know, representing light as these straight lines here. This is plain polarized light. And then that passes through our sample. And what happens as it passes through the sample, that light begins to you know, get rotated slightly. You know, it rotates a little bit more and more as it passes through. Once it comes out, you know, it's at a particular rotation, which can be measured. So then maybe this light is rotated 20 degrees to the right. And that's the optical rotation of this particular sample. From here, the actual calculation that's used to get a specific rotation. We take the degree of rotation and 
and that's what comes from the polarimeter and that's divided by the path length and the concentration. So what this does is it gives you a specific value that way um, you know, if you change your path length and concentration, that'll change the rotation that comes out of the polarimeter. So this makes it a constant for any given molecule. So here are a few key takeaways from this. The first, which might be the most important, there's absolutely no correlation between plus and minus and R and S. Yes, they're both used to describe a certain enantiomer of a chiral compound. But the difference is plus and minus is experimental. R and S is bookkeeping. So just for a simple example, this molecule, it's a single enantiomer, it's a chiral compound, I can tell you with absolute certainty that that chiral center has the R configuration. I have absolutely no idea on earth whether it's positive or negative with its optical rotation. There is no way to know just by looking at it. So that's the big difference there. I would have to take this and put this into a polarimeter and measure the optical rotation to figure out if it's positive or negative. If you have a single enantiomer, that's going to be optically active. If you have a racemic mixture, of two enantiomers, that's optically inactive. And likewise, achiral molecules Those are, of course, optically inactive because they don't rotate light at all. Okay, now we spent most of this time talking about enantiomers. But it's also worth noting um, a little bit about the physical properties of diastereomers. Okay, here I have three stereoisomers of tartaric acid. And the first two, these are enantiomers. The third one, this one is actually a meso compound, but it's a diastereomer of the others. So from what we've already learned, we know that the two enantiomers will have identical melting points. They're both 168 to 170 degrees Celsius. Um, and these two are optically active, uh, so they have optical rotations that have been measured The first one is positive 12 degrees and the second one is of course negative 12 degrees But I want to mention now this diastereomer Diastereomers have 
different properties than enantiomers. All the physical properties are different. So this um, meso compound here, it actually has a melting point of 146 to 148 degrees. So that's different than the melting point of the enantiomers. So diastereomers always have different properties. And since this is achiral, the alpha D is zero. It doesn't rotate light.